Coach Bardwaj make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Opening statement. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, for me, I guess my opening statement, again, is short and sweet. Um, well, well, what a great experience. Um, really enjoyed it. Really got to, I, felt, I feel like, get a full taste of what a college football offense looks like, let alone one of the fastest, probably, yeah, uh, uh, I've ever seen, period. Uh, it was eye-opening. Uh, you know, calling, saying myself being unprepared is uh, probably being nice. Uh, and, uh, it's uh, the idea that you're getting a play call every 10 seconds, understanding the full play call itself. It, it, was, it was crazy. The same thing on defense, right? Understanding, you know, what are the decisions you have to make, understanding tempo, understanding everything like that. It, it was wonderful. But for me, in the end, it, it felt real. It felt good. Uh, uh, definitely know where I need to improve on in terms of just learning. Because for me, I came into the game just trying to see if I could start reading plays, reading coverages, uh, trying to read where the ball should be going, you know, in terms of like on offense. Uh, you know, it's been great. Guys like Coach Bell, you know, uh, really broke it down in terms of like treating me like a freshman quarterback and uh, you know, got to go through play calls and everything like that. So, you know, for me, it's, you know, only get 30 minutes of, you know, or you know, a couple hours of play, uh, play taste, but it was fun, you know, you see a lot of that information translating. But yeah, that's my high level of opening statement. I'll let you guys do that. Say, say that you have a whole new appreciation for the game now? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's just, you know, for me, <laughs> you know, I always look at tape, I always review plays, I'm always trying to learn, like, what decisions there be, but nothing in terms of this, right? Okay. Watching two hours, four hours, and take consecutive and breaking down, and then actually understanding the logic. You know, I was talking to Coach Anderson about this. Is that you know what's amazing about specifically like a spread offense is that when executed correctly, you should always win. You really should. The decisions are there. It just requires people to execute in terms of a read, right? When you're doing the run, when you're doing the you know uh, bump screen, when you're trying to get those play calls. But in the blocking schemes and the long play, we should always have an opening. It's just about execution. And I found that wonderful. It's something that I relate to in my life. So the idea is that if you have 100% execution, you should always be winning. And that was fun to learn. It was fun to see. And it was fun to see actually diagram on paper. It's also, in a weird way, fun to see it all fall apart at times, right? Where you're trying to see, like, if a guy does not do the right route, if you're not doing the right read, you know, I'm hearing, you know, Coach Bell in my ear. I'm hearing the defense, you know, uh, you know where, where the line's, you know, not set up correctly. That's that's fantastic. You know, it's, not, it's nothing that you never see as a fan watching the game. So. Uh, seeing that and kind of that first experience has been unreal, uh, eye-opening. Any of those words work for me. On some of those trick plays, did you just say, hey, let's run a trick play, or did you say specifically what play you guys wanted? Yeah, so yeah. I, I specifically called for a play, but there's only two yeah. or three trick plays okay. actually yeah. in play at that point. Yeah. It's not like I had a massive selection. Right, yeah, yeah. The greatest idea by any means. <laughs> uh, yeah. really, really, I came in with a game plan that I actually didn't want to run any trick plays in the first half. Yeah. Um, Clearly, Coach Larry had a different strategy. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, I wanted to just learn. So, you know, it's hearing you know, Coach Bell and Gary Joe on the defensive side and kind of seeing what those play calls and understanding the tempo and the feel of the game. You know, the one thing that, you know, when we actually ended up calling, um, yeah, the, the, the crazy uh, end around pass or the touchdown, um, I wanted to start off strong where there was an opportunity and I wanted to start off with an initial drive. We actually almost canceled out of it. Because we always have to delay a game. We call the timeout right before that because we clearly want to And this time was yelling at me, like, who the hell couldn't get the, Couldn't get the head coach to call the timeout? Yeah, well, I'm paying attention, so I'm not in there. We didn't get to delay a game, so at least I was somewhat in it. Uh, we were a little bit late, but we had to get the team out. So I almost canceled it because uh, we actually showed two reasons that we were going to run that play. Uh, we asked for the ball to actually change from the right hash to the left hash. That's the only way that play works. Uh, and then second call timeout, so clearly we took way too long. So I was worried that they were going to play safe coverage then. So I wanted to cancel and try, try it again. But in the end, there was like, again, only 12 seconds on the play clock uh, when we got reset. So it was just like, let's go. We almost canceled out of that. What's it like uh, being on a sideline with Trooper Taylor? <laughs> Oh man, that is, he is one of the most interesting people I've ever met, period, let alone football. That guy has a passion and a drive that I immensely respect. Something where he, he speaks, you know, I, I see why the players love him. He speaks to them directly. He's one of them. He's a guy who wants to be a part of the crew and build that relationship on a much deeper level as well. And he, he does it like no other. Uh, he's got his swag, he's got his look, he's got his move and his feel, 
I love it. Um, that guy's the most animated. He makes you pumped about your decisions, but also the other side, he's just as animated when something goes wrong. You know, he's he's in the ear. He's trying to make the decisions right. But you know, he's one of those guys, prototypical guys who, who loves the game. And you can see it, and you know. Every, there's a lot of people who love the game, but this guy shows up on the field, right? You know, uh, it was great because we kind of had those back-to-back -back plays at the end where he threw the 70 yard end around touchdown pass, and then uh, a couple plays in on the next drive, he took the pick six all the way down, and that was him, Trooper, running on the field. like, everyone, go, go, go. You love that. He's leaving the pack. He's running it, man. That guy, uh, that guy lives, breathes football. I love that. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, I respect. Has he recruited you to Jonesboro yet? <laughs> he's not, no. He's rather, he just showed me his ring 12 times, which I love. Because <laughs> um, it's funny, I, I tell these guys as well, like, I love collecting, like, I love collecting rings. Collecting rings are the greatest representation of someone's success, right? All the hard work going into the season. Uh, primarily, I collect, like, sports rings, but now clearly I have to start collecting college football rings. These things are gorgeous. But, you know, massive respect to that. And, you know, uh, I, no recruitment by any means, rather. We'll probably just start trading hip-hop songs back so we can get some good, good beats to, for these guys to come out of it. Any plans to come back in the fall and pitch a game as a fan? Uh, uh, plans, hypothetically, absolutely. Any real plans? I don't even know where I am right now at times, right? You know, it's one of those crazy, crazy moments where things are moving really, really, really fast. Um, but definitely want to, uh, definitely try with the goal of making at least this season. You know, like next season, um, what's great is on the roster, uh, on the schedule, they have a non-conference with USC down in LA, so I'm clearly going to have to go. It's an hour, uh, hour flight. I have no excuses for that. So then we got me in there. You know, there's a great, there's a couple new non-conference games. I'm joking around with some of these guys. You know, Tennessee, and Miami would be fun. Um, but you know, in the end, you know, if they're you know, Louisiana, Lafayette would be a great conference game to also be a part of. But we're trying to figure it out. I told them though, we'll not go to, was it Toledo? Where is it? Boise? I know. I know. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I want to enjoy the new city. I don't think I'm going to have fun in Idaho. I said it. <laughs> Still head coach till midnight. Oh, <laughs> So hang on. So we don't have to worry about you uh, leaving this job for Idaho, is what you're saying? No, no, no. Stay not Idaho <laughs> Boise or anything like that? No, no. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I, I love this experience, but I mean, uh, I consider myself a fast learner in anything I do, but... Um, if I have to rate myself on a one to ten scale of where I'm as anywhere as a coach, it's like a negative twelve, right? Like <laughs> understanding the process is great, but you know, if you ask me how to evaluate myself so far, sure, I, I probably think I'm the best coach of the nation with six days experience. That's probably the way I think of it, right? That's that's really it. But man, what these guys have gone through, meeting each staff member, understanding they've all put in years, you just look at a resume of any of these guys. Period. It, it, it's years of hard work and dedication. Um, so I'm going to stick with Tech for now. <laughs> Maybe a little bit later we can go back and have uh, those conversations. But, yeah, it, it's uh, it, no, no worries about me going anywhere by any means. Any words for Coach Lacell after the game? Uh, he left before we couldn't the end of the game. He was <laughs> in the middle of the field uh, in the, at the fourth quarter. I, got, I was worried he was going to get mowed down by one of our running backs. Um, uh, no, I mean, Coach was just, yeah, he's great, man. Um, that, that, that's a, le a walking legend of you know, uh, I was blown away that he was going to be a part of this process and, um, you know, understanding, you know, it was great because before the game, we actually sat out here and talked for about an hour. He, you know, he told me his story. He, yeah, I shared a little bit about money as well. And he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great guy. You know, he's, he's got stories for days because he's been through and I respect that. You know, it's a, one thing I don't have. I don't have the years of experience in anything I've really done. You know, I'm only 25, so I'm trying to learn from each of these guys. Uh, yeah, the only thing he told me at the end is like, hey, stop running up the score, uh, <laughs> which was uh, always fun to hear from him. And then at the same time, he's like, you know, he's just telling me, uh, thank you for you know, meeting each other and um, just having the time to speak. You know, I hope to continue to talk yeah, talking with him, man. Uh, that's a fascinating guy, you know. Uh, anyone who's got five rings, that's not as bad for the world one. How was the power rate back? Weird. Um, I was so I was actually mad when it happened in terms of. Like, there was still two minutes in the game, and he was like, uh, and, uh, one of the uh, video assistants had come up to take my headset. I'm like, I kind of thought this was a game. Why, why am I? Why am I losing my headset? Then it kind of dawned on me when everyone just parted away. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 it was in the play today. <laughs> yes. it, hey, it was in the fine print. Hey, it's not like you should be surprised. That's fine. <laughs> hey. I'll take the fine, I'll take the hit, but you'll get genuine with me right now. Um, uh, you know, it, it was great, though. It was a great feeling when I hit. You know, it was, it was awesome in my culmination, but, man, was I mad. Because, I mean, the truth is, like, I know 
uh, there's so much for me to learn in this game if I ever want to continue in any fashion, right? But uh, I'm just a little perfectionist in anything I do. I want to get better. Uh, right before the power rate hit, we gave up a 70 yard, uh, like a fifth, what was it? 43 yard pass? Some, something that's unacceptable on a fade route <laughs> where the guy clearly should have caught that. I don't care who was defending that. And then we didn't even tackle him out. Or maybe the refs cheated. I couldn't even see in that corner. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you can't do the refs cheating. Uh, hey, Jerry, you can't pull, 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 pull the plug, Jerry. Really? Come on, pull the plug, Jerry. Jerry. out with a bang right now, you know, one and done here. Um, but no, but then the other problem was, it's like, right after the bath. That's kind of the trend here. Yeah. <laughs> right, after the, right after the bath, we threw a pick. I was, I was insanely irritated because in the end, uh, you know, I want to see why that play was called, why it was, what was the mystery, because... Yeah, sure, mistakes will happen, but I want to understand what the mistake is. That's the only way I'm going to learn it as well in terms of that process. So, love the power rate bat, hated the timing. That's the best way to explain it. Guys, really enjoying this, but in the interest of time, <laughs> we do have to keep moving. So, we're going to bring up.